Imushigame, Mitsugu Tanaka and brother Yasuaki Tanaka of Marutu Koi Farm are on watch duty. A number of parent sets have been placed together on the farm in the hope that they will spawn during the night. However, these parents will all be artificially spawned. The parents are in show pools outside and a microphone is connected with a speaker system in the office so the brothers can listen for the telltale sign of splashing to indicate the spawning and their evening's work has commenced. At 8.55 the signal that Mitsugo and Yasuo have been waiting for arrives. Using just torchlight and in the pouring rain they have to identify firstly whether any eggs have actually been released and secondly which female has released them. With the female identified, she is caught and moved to a separate tank. Obviously they don't want her to continue spawning naturally. The vent is again checked to ensure that she is the correct female. She has to be left for one hour for her eggs to loosen, so they can be stripped more easily by hand. With the other parents secured again, Mitsuga and Yesu can return to the drive for a while. Shigeru Tanika is one of the pioneers of spawning koi artificially. He is well aware it will be a long night ahead. After one hour has elapsed, the female is brought inside and anaesthetized. The bowl she is in is one metre in diameter. Outside, another female, a Tencho Kohaku, has started to spawn as well and is also moved into isolation. Slowly but surely the female falls under the effects of the anaesthetic as Shigeo and Yasu look on patiently. Finally she succumbs and is wrapped carefully in a towel. Before the eggs are removed, her vent and surrounding area must be dried thoroughly, as when the eggs are touched by water they will start to harden, preventing them from being fertilised later. Yes. 
When the female is turned the right way up, the eggs freely flow from her vent into the metal bowl. As the flow slows, gentle pressure is applied to the abdomen of the koi to ensure that all the eggs are removed. Any eggs left could cause problems in the future. Seven hundred and eighty grams is approximately four hundred thousand eggs. With the egg stripped from the female, a male kahaku is netted to be paired with her. At the same time, another female has started to release eggs. Shigiyoshi, the eldest of the three brothers, has also arrived. All members of the family are involved in the spawning process. Like the female, the male is wrapped in a towel, although it seems he's still got a bit of fight left in him, so he's returned to the anaesthetic. When finally ready, the vent and surrounding area is again dried to prevent water contamination. A gentle squeeze and sperm is soon coming from the vent. As the sperm comes out, it is sucked up into a syringe. The work of the male and the female is over for the night. Now the rest of the process is in the hands of the breeder. The plastic strips state that this is a sankei cross with kaku and will be used to identify the eggs later. The eggs are placed in the metal cup which already contains a measure of sperm mixed with ringer solution. The now fertilised eggs are then distributed evenly over the nylon spawning ropes which are attached to a plastic frame. The eggs are sticky and fix themselves immediately to the fine hairs of the spawning ropes. The frame is turned over and the process repeated to ensure even distribution of the eggs.
The plastic strip is attached to the frame to identify it. The first of many frames of hopefully fertilised eggs is complete. 11.30pm and there is still a long night's work ahead for the Tanika family. 5.20am and it's a damp misty morning in Mushigame following a night of rain. For the Tanika family their work is just about complete. The frames of spawning brushes are now suspended in concrete ponds awaiting transfer to the mud ponds later in the day. Shigeyoshi checks one remaining female who, so far, hasn't laid any eggs. When she will is hard to predict. Different breeders handle their eggs in different ways. These are the ponds of Kanoikoi Farm who, like Marajou, hatch the fry in holding nets in a mud pond before transferring them to their growing ponds. Others may hatch the fry inside the koi house or in the mud pond into which the koi are just allowed to swim freely upon hatching. These fry are just nine days from their eggs being laid and fertilized. Their tiny transparent bodies enable you to see the tiny swim bladder of air inside. 